What does your crazy neighbor do to be labeled the crazy neighbor? Story 1. Used to live in a little town of 300 people, where we had an elderly neighbor named Gladys. She would routinely look near our garbage can outside and take the recyclable bottles and cans we would leave for her. After we cleaned out a fish tank, we put the gravel and fake plants in a bag and left it on top of the garbage can because it was already full. About a week later, Gladys hollered at me while I was outside to come over as she wanted to show me something. She had taken that bag we had left and planted the fake plants along the side of her house. She said she wasn't real confident that they would make it, but so far they seemed to be thriving. I could only nod and compliment her on her green thumb. Story 2. He eats my flowers. In his defense, he told us that he has been doing it for years when he introduced himself after we bought the house. He also brought over frozen cookies in a plastic bag as a housewarming gift, but wasn't sure what was in them. We share a side yard and he is a really great neighbor. Just an older, quiet guy who keeps to himself and eats my flowers. Comes over to my yard and eats the lilies raw or brings scissors and clips the heads to boil and make jam. I thought that his particular foraging was interesting and quirky, so I planted a couple raspberry, blackberry, and blueberry bushes three years ago when we first moved in on the side yard we share. I told him to help himself to berries anytime, especially before the birds do. The bushes have all gone insane and the entire side of my house is now a summer berry haven for us to share. Having a decent relationship with the guy I share a property line with is worth some deadheaded flowers. Story 3. Well, I used to have a neighbor who was legitimately intellectually ill, although I don't know his actual diagnosis. His truck wouldn't start one day, dead battery, and he told everyone on the street that another neighbor was stealing the electricity. He knew this because of the way this guy parked his vehicle. Obviously, it was sucking electricity from the ground for his battery, which drained the car batteries near him. Many times, he would run down the street and warn everyone to hide their valuables because Japan was invading the country. He wasn't on sweets, but he did take medication for his mental illness, and everyone on our street could tell when he stopped taking it. Whenever he would start saying completely irrational things, we would remind him to take his medication, and he would thank us and go home, presumably to take it. He lived alone, and he was getting older, so I think he had a hard time remembering to take it. There were many, many more incidents. ETA, thanks for the rewards. I've never gotten any before this post. Story 4. This woman lived next to us who needed to have the police called on her at least once a week. She would scream at her roommate at all hours of the night, go into a drunken and sometimes candy-filled stupor, and scream at us while tripping out as we sat in our backyard. More than once, I had to kick her out of our home because she walked in unannounced, beer in hand, and drunk as ever. One time, I called the police because she was screaming about terminating someone and rolling around on her front lawn. Another time, I received a call at work, one in the morning as I work third shift. My GF informed me they had to evacuate the house because the neighbor's garage was on fire. Turned out either she or her roommate had done it while doing sweets or smoking in the garage. She ended up moving away but would still walk to our house to ask for our lawnmower. She was not happy when I told her to get off my porch. Story 5. I cared for an elderly woman for many years. She lived to the age of 93 in a crime-ridden inner-city neighborhood by being as tough and nasty as any criminal living nearby. Her oddest actions involved her incorrect belief that she owned the road in front of her house. She didn't even own a car, but she insisted that nobody park there. She would confront them if they parked in front of her house. If they did it again, she slashed their tires in the middle of the night, over and over for years. She was never caught, but everybody knew it was her. She only stopped when she lost the physical strength to slash a tire in her mid-80 ace. Then she started using spray paint on the cars. He don't park in front of my house no more was all the justification she needed to damage her neighbor's cars. Story 6. This older lady lives across the street from me, and she is obsessed with leaves falling on her lawn, to the point that she will come out of her house and pick up one individual leaf off the grass in the fall, or any other time. She spends hours a day outside with the leaf blower in fall. She will go and knock on other neighbors' doors if she thinks you have too many leaves on your grass. She'll come over into your yard and do it tilde tilde yourself, tilde tilde herself if you're not home. What I think is weird is that she's in her 70s, no kids or grandkids living with her, and lives alone in a pretty large four-bedroom house with an amazing in-ground pool in the backyard, with a slide and diving board and everything. Nobody has used that pool in at least five years, yet she opens it up every summer. Somehow, she likes my family and has never once yelled at us about our leaves, and randomly brings things over, like half-eaten gallons of ice cream, and asks if we want it because she's not using it. Huh. Story 7 the old lady who lived below me left me multiple cryptic letters blaming me for the birds chirping too loudly in the mornings. Not pet birds, the sparrows and cow outside. This went on for months. Edit. I'm flattered by the upvotes and awards. Thank you. To answer the most commonly asked question, yes, for a brief period, I had a bird feeder. 
I took it down after a few months after multiple cryptic letters. Eventually, management got involved and took her side, even though bird feeders were explicitly allowed per the lease. There were several trees nearby, including one that literally hung onto both her and my balconies. I assure you that birds existed before I set up the feeder, as they continued to exist after. My sister and BL took over the lease four years ago, and they still get the occasional note from Bird Lady. Apartment management has even inspected their unit to verify there's no bird feeder or any other bird luring devices at it too. I found one of the notes. Again, your bird dodo is on my railings. Bird seeds on my porch chairs. Your birds are ruining my night rest. Wee hours of the morning, birds in your feeder chirping. Bird feeder was gone at this point. Story 8. He murdered another older neighbor lady, beat her to death with his bare hands. In the middle of our townhome complex. Well, it was actually her daughter and granddaughter that are my neighbors, but she was visiting them like she does every week. Next thing you know, detectives are knocking on my door seeing if I knew any information about him or the incident. The only thing I knew was he was always arguing with other neighbors. I looked him up on Facebook after the detectives left, and he had posted he was going to terminate her 30 minutes before he was going to do it. Took pictures of her car and her daughter's house and posted it on Facebook with her address saying, I'm going to get the bad person. Then, after it happened, he post, got the red-headed old bad person. It is just crazy to me that at 5.30 p.m. broad daylight, just a couple yards from my door, he terminated her, and no one saw it happening. Edit to add, investigation is still ongoing. I'm not sure why it's not first-degree murder, and according to other neighbors, they've had confrontation before. Right now, his charge is second-degree with intent. Next court date isn't until sept. Story 9. My neighbor was an 85-year-old widow that lived alone. She had two vehicles, a car and truck, and over the course of a few months, I realized that she was no longer parking her car in her garage like she had for the many years prior to that. Then suddenly, the truck wasn't being parked inside the garage either. Turns out she no longer had room in her garage to park her vehicles because she was walking down to a residential construction site about a block away every evening, and she'd grab two 2X4S and bring them home. She had over 500 boards stacked in her garage, and when she was questioned on what she was going to do with it, she didn't have an answer. Edit. Bonus crazy neighbor stories. I drove 16 hours straight, pulled in my drive, and crashed on my couch immediately. Must have left the garage door open because I woke up to the neighbor lady shaking me to see if they missed my newspaper delivery that morning also. Neighbor lady thought I didn't clean up after my dog in her front yard. I had never owned a dog. So she retaliated by walking around the neighborhood with a garbage bag picking up every bit of dog poo she could find, and dumped said bag of dog poo on my front lawn while I was standing in the front window watching. Ran up over $300 on one month's water bill of mine because neighbor lady was hooking her sprinkler up to my water when I'd leave for work in the morning and would let it run all day until right before I got home from work. She would put up an ugly orange snow fence between our yards in the fall to keep my leaves out of her yard. Me pointing out that I only had pine trees did not dissuade her from the decision to leave the snow fence up. Edit hash two. Day one, I should have known something was fishy with this lady. Literally day one, I closed on my house at 9 a.m. and had a roofing company at the house waiting for the call that I closed. We spent the day ripping off the old layers and getting bundles up on the roof for the next day. It was hot out. We were exhausted and all sitting in the front yard cooling off when neighbor lady walked out of her house, down the sidewalk to my house, and without even acknowledging the six of us staring at her, she walked in the front door and had herself a look-see. She hated dandelions. I found this out the first year that I lived there when I noticed that my lawn was dying off in an extremely weird way. Almost as if someone was spraying on the stream setting trying to snipe dandelions from 20 feet away. That's literally what she was doing. Being the nice guy I am, I would clean her driveway off in the winter because I had a snowblower. She would never thank me in person. But instead, she'd come over to my house after I had finished and would leave a bag on my front door that usually contained whatever expired goods she had in her pantry. Some of the standouts for me was like a dozen cans of 10-year expired Chef Boyardee, SP stuff, and once a half a bag of wheat flour. Story 10. The neighbor behind us had a leak in his water pipe, and rather than fix it, he just had the sump pump drain it out into the backyard. This meant that all year round the back of our yard was a little bit damp. Eventually, the leaky pipe burst and filled the house with five feet of water. His solution to this was just to keep the pump running and flood the entire neighborhood. After about an hour... A posse of all the neighbors whose yards were being flooded confronted him and called the city to shut off the water. The city fixed the water pipe, and the neighbor ended up with a large fine. At least my yard stays basically dry now. I should also mention that this neighbor once rented the house out to a bunch of crackheads, and it nearly burned down because the ex-girlfriend of one of these morons snuck in and set the house on fire. 
Story 11, ours is the classic retired old man, terrible health, and literally nothing going on in his life. He's not married, and I try to stay out of everyone's business, but I don't believe he has any kids. Rarely has visitors. I think he had a dream once of being a police officer, but never quite made it. So he's taken it upon himself to be the neighborhood police person. He spies on everyone and makes it his business to know everything. My favorite encounter was catching him literally camping out in my front yard bushes early morning, spying on neighbors a few doors down. He had a coffee mug, notepad, blanket, literally just hanging out in my front yard making notes about the weird folks who were likely doing sweets at home. When I asked him what he was doing, he just didn't seem to understand that it was inappropriate. He seems to like us, so it's nice, I guess, but he creeps me out. Story 12. Poisoned our dog once. I have a hedge in front of my house. When it gets trimmed and a single flipping leaf falls on her driveway, which she cleans every day, due to wind, she gets angry. One time, she just let leaves blow onto her driveway. She then picked all of them up and put them in a bag, which she hung on my door, saying that it belongs to us in an angry voice. One time in 2004, my mom participated in a TV show where a singer would visit your house and a professional chef made food for you and the singer. She constantly yelled at the camera crew and tried to hit their equipment with a broom. Story 13. My guy was married but lived totally separate from his wife. She would visit every so often and he would travel to her too every now and then. Always wondered about that until I got a chance to be invited into his house. A hoarder of garage sale stuff. Dolls and just doll heads scattered around and boxes of toys and whatever else you can imagine. Only a two feet path throughout the house. He also had an overgrown yard full of all kinds of plants. It was kind of cool looking, but seeing an overgrown jungle after some years was a bit concerning. Nice guy, and we would share a beer all the time. My best neighborhood friend. Story 14. Before I moved out of my parents' place, the neighbor on the other side of the backyard fence was always doing crazy cow. He'd be practicing shooting his BB gun down his yard at the fence, while my dad was doing yard work just on the other side of it, or in the middle of the yard, or just minding his own business, really. My dad and I got absolutely pissed one time because our neighbor decided to try practicing with a .22 rifle while my dad was outside with our German Shepherd. There were two instances where the neighbor trapped two skunks, on separate occasions, in a live animal trap, terminated them himself, then threw their bodies over the fence to stink up the entire yard and neighborhood by extension. He then tried to tell the neighbors that it was my parents' fault. My dad simply cleaned up the messes, disposed of the skunk remains properly, then told the neighbors the truth of the matter before the wacko managed to. It helped in our defense that our other neighbors already viewed the guy as the crazy neighbor. My dad also invested in a camera system and set it up on the shed just by the fence. Oh well, the neighbor's dead now. Heart attack or some cow. I forgot what my dad said. And his yard has become a huge mess and eyesore because his widowed wife refuses to do anything about it. Story 15. This guy is weird as hell. Okay, so, he plays VR in a large bunny on sea like the kind the kid gets in a Christmas story. Which, you know, cool, I guess you do you. But he plays with his window open so everyone can see him. And on top of that, he plays from what I can tell exclusively military sims and never breaks character. You can hear him yelling stuff like, contact 30 clicks, south by southwest, or stuff, down reloading, ready up. The guy will throw himself to the ground, and I mean throw himself. The few times I've spoken to him or seen him in person, he's had bruises on his arms and face from hitting the ground. And that's only what I can see from his window. Other than that at night you can hear that guy grinding hammering and drilling on something. I don't know, he's weird, dude. He says he works for the government, does contractor work. He has really nice stuff, expensive stuff, and new vehicles all the time. He can't carry on a conversation. Starts getting nervous and will break away as soon as he can. He was home for a few weeks, said he was in between contracts, and I managed to talk to him a bit while he was setting stuff outside. That stuff he was laying out. A rucksack that had seen some heavy use in everything from medical and survivalist camping gear to empty magazine holders and a plate holder for bullet-resistant plates. He said he was letting them air out since he was planning on going on a backpacking trip for a few weeks. Weirdest part is he leaves almost every night between 9-10 p.m. Probably to get some of the junk food he'll leave in his car occasionally. But every night? I like to think the guy's a secret agent and uses the VR cow as an excuse to explain away bruises and cuts. Either way, I feel sort of safe he's genuinely nice when he does talk to you just in that I haven't spoken to another human being for years kind of way. You go secret agent bunny, saving the world one hop at a time. Story 16, my parents next door neighbor Nancy started with the no trespassing sign in the backyard that faces our yard and nothing else. Set up a motion activated floodlight that faces the side of our house and nothing else. She stabbed our ball when it landed in her yard when we were children. Called the cops on the neighbors because their dog barked constantly despite them not owning a dog. Thinks my mother, 
the sweetest person you can meet in this world, is a backstabbing traitor for warning the new neighbors not to let their kids play on Nancy's lawn, verbally assaulted me for chasing deer out of our flower garden, etc. But the true FICO moment came with the trees. We have large trees along the property line, just barely on our side. And she was starting to go all psycho about the tree is going to fall and crush her house and demanded it be cut down. We consulted an arborist who said it did not but could use a trim that would make it impossible to fall on her yard at all. The entire time they were trimming, she stalked the property line and screamed if anyone stepped over it. While this trim was happening, a single stick fell on her lawn. She lost it, threatened to call the cops, told them they better have all their licenses up to date, etc. Arborists tried to blow her off, but my mom insisted they check, sent someone to City Hall and renewed their license. Thirty minutes after that, a cop showed up to check as Nancy had called them. Arborists were super thankful for my mom warning them. Story 17. Oh, Jeanette, may she rest in peace. We rented a house from my mom's co-worker. Our landlord grew up in this house and was renting it out. Across the street was Jeanette, an 80-ish-year-old lady who had lived in that house most of her life and knew our landlord very well. Well, because she knew the landlord, that meant she felt she could come into our house whenever she wanted. She watched us through her window and had every excuse to come by. I have never really locked my doors, but obviously we started to. It didn't stop her. If she knew we were home, she would ring the doorbell incessantly. Our blinds always had to be down, living room lights off, so she wouldn't know we were home. Just got in? Quick, run inside before Jeanette sees you. We saw her peering out of her blinds on a regular basis. One morning, the doorbell was going. I hid in the bathroom to pretend like I wasn't home. How did she see me? The doorbell stopped, but the doorknob kept rattling. She tried for five full flipping minutes to open our door. Probably would have been longer, but I gave up and let her in. Why didn't I tell her to fudge off? Look, I'm a nice Midwestern girl. I can be confrontational if someone is being mean, but she was just lonely, a tad crazy, but harmless. Some notable things that she did said, my husband was cooking when she came in and called him a good little housewife, told our neighbor he shouldn't be dating his daughter. They were, of course, not father-daughter and were, in fact, a 40-year-old couple, and there was not actually a big age difference. My favorite was when she was in our living room. She very suddenly crouched down and peered out of our blinds and said, Look at those fat people walking that skinny dog! After we started locking the door, our doorknob rattling like she was trying to break in the doorbell was a consistent thing. My husband tells that story so well. It's like she was a character from a sitcom. We didn't know these people existed. She was eventually put into a home and passed away about a year or so later. Edit. My dad recognized the story and found my Reddit account. Hi, Dad! Story 18. I saw the neighbor across the street. A woman who looked to be about 45 or 50 and had only been living there a few weeks wander into her next-door neighbor's house while they weren't home, wearing no shirt, just a bra, and then like five minutes walk out muttering to herself, nothing in her hands or anything. She kept walking in circles in her driveway, muttering. She lived by herself, and this was concerning to me, so I called 911. Cops showed up and talked to her. During that time, the owners of that house showed up, and I told them what happened. They said nothing had been disturbed or anything and they had never talked to that woman before. Shortly after that, an ambulance showed up, took the woman away, and I never saw her again. Like a month later, some people showed up to take her things out of her house. Story 19. One of my neighbors regularly goes off to anyone who will listen about how the government is spying on her. She has distributed letters to everyone in the complex with the deranged story full of conflicting claims. It gets really awkward when she starts yelling at tradespersons who are just there to do a job. I have to escort anyone working outside my unit because she will tear into them. She tried it once with me when I was doing maintenance on my AC unit, figuring I was one of the tradespeople who were hired by the government to install spy equipment. I think she might have gotten new medication, but she still gives me the side eye wherever she walks past. Story 20. Former crazy neighbor here. I, 23 at the time, F, lived alone in a basement unit in a not great part of town. My bedroom windows, being in the basement, lined up directly with a very busy street filled with bars and lots of traffic. While smoking cigarettes on my stoop, I often had a knife or bayball bat physically with me. To my neighbors, I often referred to a live and boyfriend often, even though I lived alone. At times, I would go as far as yelling at my fake boyfriend in my apartment when I heard other people in the hallway storming out of the apartment and telling my neighbors what an unpleasant person my boyfriend was. Also, my neighbors believed I didn't live alone. Story 21. Called the cops in township for anything, real or imagined, that she felt needed to stop. She complained a woman down the street was illegally running a business in a residential zone. The woman in question was a foster parent and crazy bad person next door, CBND, tried arguing that she's getting paid by the government to take these kids. That's a business. The family across the street from her has a special needs child 
and a nurse comes by a few times a week for reasons I'm not privy to. The nurse parked legally on the street. CBND called the cops to ticket and tow the nurse's car for parking in front of her house, and those spots belong to my property. I tended to a bulb garden at the end of my property that a previous tenant had planted. I would put kitchen scraps, plant material only, in a small composting pile next to it. CBND called the cops that I was leaving garbage through the yard and onto her property. Cops came by, sees about 10 potatoes worth of skins and a few banana peels in a neat pile surrounded by bricks, and tells me to have a good day. CBND continued to insist the property line was where she wanted it to be, which right through the aforementioned bulb garden. She went out and bought a bunch of shrubs and just dug up our yard and tried planting a new hedgerow on her imagined property line. My landlord ripped them out that afternoon. CBND called the cops. LL offered to hire a surveyor, and did, and the cops told her to not plant anything until it was resolved. LL and surveyors show up. CBND ripped the rebar from the surveyor's hands, insisted this was all a plot to steal her property, and chased them off. Cops were called in to supervise and guard the surveying team. She behaved until they left. She then went and dug up our yard again to replant the shrubs again. CBND then sprayed Roundup through the bulb garden I was tending because it was on her property. CBND put web cameras in each of her windows pointed at my house. CBND owned two Cadillacs, an Impala, and a pickup truck. She would park them on the street, spaced just far enough to block anyone from being able to park on the block, because those spaces are part of how her property, narrator they were not. This is despite the fact that she had a private driveway she could have used. CBND was charged with harassing my other neighbor twice, appeared in court twice, and was found guilty twice. CBND continues to insist that there is a conspiracy against her to steal her property. CBND accused me of dealing sweets, that I had cars pulling in at all hours of the day and night, none of which is true. Called the cops. CBND accused my other neighbor of sleeping with CBND's husband for money. Tried calling cops on her for prostitution. Through all of this, there's nothing we can do, says the cops in township. Story 22. My neighbor moved onto a plot of land that is not his, but claims it's his family's. Moved a bunch of trash onto the land, came over to my house and demanded my husband, and I allow him to use our private road and our utilities. We said no. We farm 20 acres of our land, which happens to be located around the plot he lives on. Long story short, he started trying to sabotage our land and our farmers. He would post videos to Facebook saying our farmers were harassing him. Then one day the neighbor got two friends of his to come and attack our farmer, which resulted in his friend's death. Neighbor fled the scene and ended up in a neighboring state. He was summoned by the police to come and clean up his property within 30 days. He came back for one day, and the one day he was back, his trailer mysteriously caught on fire and burnt down. Neighbor ended up fleeing again until he was subpoenaed into court for the death of the other guy. For reference, the neighbor has a rap sheet about 12 pages long, including burglary, touching children, abusing his ex, stalking, meth use, etc. And so did his friend who got terminated. Sad he got terminated because he was pulled into his friend's stupid mess. As his friend was dying on the ground, my neighbor had the decency to pull out his phone and go on Facebook Live. No attempts to aid his friend or anything. Meanwhile, the farmer was on the ground putting pressure on the wound and bawling his eyes out. Story 23. I used to rent the basement apt of the neighborhood crazy lady. Her car was decorated with thousands of rocks that she glued all over it. The property was incredibly overgrown. She had five unlicensed dogs, two cats, turtles that lived in her bathtub, pigeons, chickens, a rooster, and more animals that I can't specifically remember, but I do remember counting them all up. She had something like 17 animals upstairs. She'd regularly practice saxophone while the dogs howled along with her. She didn't have a job and spent every day going on Craigslist free and picking things up. There was a room in the basement where she kept all of the stuff that was three, four feet deep and completely packed. I remember a cardboard stand-up of Captain Kirk and one of the Statue of Liberty sticking out of the hoard. I desperately took a job as a door-to-door -door solicitor for a short time and was randomly assigned to my neighborhood. When I introduced myself to the next-door neighbor and said what house I lived in, they were about ready to wring my neck, haha. -ha. I told them, yeah, it probably sucks living next to her, but I actually live there, so yeah, no sympathy. Story 24. I used to live next to Screaming Guy. It was a cheap apartment, and hearing through the walls didn't take a lot of effort. He would yell pretty regularly at the phone, TV, something. We could never figure out what it was. It was always during the day, and we could never find sporting events that corresponded to the yelling times. He was always polite and soft-spoken when we interacted with him in person. Edit. And he lived alone and didn't have any pets we were aware of. The complex didn't allow them, and we never saw any. Edit 2. Gaming seems unlikely demographically, as he was in his 50s in 2006 to 2008, when we lived there. He was a bit outside of the gaming into adulthood generation. 
Not impossible, though. Story 25. I am a little late to comment, so I don't if anyone will read this, but I have been waiting for a chance to talk about my crazy former neighbor. He was our landlord neighbor in a duplex we were renting. He was a hoarder and did a lot of crazy things like rummage through our trash to retrieve garbage we had tossed. It was in L.A. and he would put out dozens of teeny tiny receptacles, cups, milk cartons, pots, all over the yard, anytime there was a hint of rain forecasted. He would leave little pieces of plastic garbage around the fence to see if anyone took them or moved them. Odd stuff. But then there was the ultimate weird moment. We had a shared set of stairs leading off the back of the house. I went down them one day and saw a piece of bread lying on them. Thought maybe it was for the birds? Couple days later, it was a piece of toast. A day after that, the toast was wrapped up in a used napkin, propped up against my door. To this day, it is still a mystery to me why he would think I would want the five-day-old porch toast. Edit, typo, story 26. If the sun is up, he has to be making noise. Yet he goes ballistic on anyone who makes even the tiniest peep after the sun goes down. 8 a.m., mow the grass. 9 a.m., get out the loud leaf blower to blow even the tiniest particle of grass off the sidewalks and driveway. 10 a.m., get out the pressure washer to wash the sidewalks, driveway, siding on his house, his boat, his cars, the dog, whatever he can find. 11 a.m., break for lunch, but play talk radio in his garage at maximum volume while he eats. 12 p.m., Fiddle with the engine on his motorcycle, revving it every 30 seconds to make sure it sounds right. 1 p.m. Get into a screaming match with his wife, all on the front lawn. 2 p.m. Fiddle with the motorcycle again. 3 p.m. Get out the table saw and randomly cut a pile of lumber that he will never build anything with. 4 p.m. Get out the chainsaw to cut up wood for his fire pit. 5 p.m. Dinner time, with loud talk radio blasting in the background. 6 p.m. Pressure wash the sidewalks again. 7 p.m. Get out the candy eater, trimmer, and mercilessly destroy even the slightest hint of A of grass that is too tall. 8 p.m. Guess what? Leaf blower time again. 9 p.m. Last shouting match with the wife, with talk radio playing until the sun goes down. 9.05 p.m. Getting drunk on my neighbor. Me for coming home and parking my car too loudly after dark. Yes, this is a real thing he yelled at me for. Story 27. Explodes. Okay, I guess that requires some explanation. This isn't so much crazy as it is dumb, but it sure seemed crazy to me. This happened back in 2009. I had a neighbor back in the day trademark who we will call Gary. Gary was a really sweet guy. Middle-aged guy, kind of had it rough in life, but managed to keep his spirits up. He liked beer and BBQ, to a degree that made me like him immensely. He made extra money by doing odd jobs around the neighborhood. Heck, he mowed my grass for pretty cheap. Great guy. He lived with his uncle, a cool old coot with a hook for a hand. The uncle supplemented his income by buying and selling random stuff, much of which he kept in his backyard. Very Sanford and Son. They even had the old-timey truck. Gary loved to make BBQ. He would slow-breathe stuff in smokehouses that he made himself out of random junk. People would bring him things and he would turn them into smokehouses. He made the neighborhood smell nice. One day, I am off from work, hanging out at my house and playing video games. Suddenly, there is a loud explosion that sounded like an artillery shell. Pictures fall off my walls and my cats scatter and hide. Being a dumbass, my idiotic peach goes running out the back door of my house toward the sound of the explosion. My neighbor's house is right behind mine, across an alley. So I immediately see the following. The awning on the back of my neighbor's house is on fire. There is a 50-gallon drum in the backyard. It is on fire. There is a tarp held up by a number of poles to provide shade in the backyard. It is on fire. My neighbor is on the ground, unconscious, being rolled around by his uncle and a buddy. He is also on fire. So I see someone is already calling 911, so I go to help. By the time I am there, Gary is no longer on fire, so one of his buddies grabs the hose and I grab a bucket. They have one of those dual spigot thingies, so I can fill the bucket while the other guy uses the hose. I am putting out the awning on the house, and the other guy sprays down Gary to make sure he is good and extinguished, and to take heat from his burns, which look terrible. As I am refilling the bucket, I see the guy with the hose is putting out the tarp shade. He turns toward the burning barrel, aims the hose, and pulls the trigger. I am doing the slow motion no thing. When the water hit the barrel, a mushroom cloud of fire and breathe appeared above my neighborhood. I was freaking out, screaming about shooting a hose into burning liquid. I later asked his uncle what was in the barrel. He said, oh, a mix of kerosene and fuel oil. I said, that is two of the three ingredients in rudimentary liquid rocket fuel. The third ingredient makes it explode slower. Eventually, the ambulance came and immediately left with Gary. Turned out he had second and third degree burns on over half his body. However, the biggest issue was the concussion of the explosion. He had a bajillion little internal bleeds all through his torso. He nearly passed away more than once. It took him a few months to get out of the hospital. 
His face had melted, and he looked pretty horrible. He's fine now, though he is not pretty, but he had to stop doing my lawn because I guess sunlight hurts now. Poor sweet dude came to me. This was how I found out he was out of the hospital, to apologize? And to tell me his cousin will be doing my lawn. I was just glad he lived, and here he was making sure I was taken care of. And that is the story of my exploding neighbor. Edit. Since people are asking, the reason the barrel exploded was because he decided to burn off the liquid in the barrel by lighting some newspaper. When he approached, the fire hit the fumes and kaboom! Story 28. Oh, story time. I once lived in a duplex above a family of meth heads. Young married couple, their baby, sisters, and uncles and aunts, you would walk up to the house and see them railing lines in their living room. The light bulbs on our shared porch and basement would always go missing. One day, I returned home from work to see the uncle walking up and down the sidewalk in front of the duplex pushing a baby stroller. He lives with his great niece, so nothing suspicious, right? Well, I walk up and make small talk with him. We were all on pretty friendly terms. And he mentions how he was keeping an eye on the block. I laughed and asked if the baby was helping him keep watch. I then lifted the blanket he had covering the front of the stroller so I could say hi to the baby. Again, mom and I were friendly and I love kids. And instead of the baby in the stroller, dude had put a Glock in the baby stroller and was pushing it in the stroller up and down the sidewalk in front of our house. Story 29. Not crazy, but she takes two hours to mow her lawn, which includes getting down on her hands and knees next to said mower while it's running to meticulously pull any candy she finds or address whatever issue. She will call my husband at 10 p.m. to let him know she's not home, but that so-and-so will be stopping by her house to leave their car or do whatever. But don't worry, this is an authorized act. She lets us know that she will be out of town for a period of time. Can we keep an eye on her house? No problem. Also, the police have been informed of her departure. She called the police on a fox in her yard because it was acting weird. The police came and checked it out and says it was okay. I had seen the same fox the day before and it was a juvenile. I think she just startled it, hence the weirdness. Those are the ones that come to mind. Story 30. A neighbor tried to hire somebody to attack and beat up a friend of mine. A buddy of mine, Walter doesn't have the most charming personality, so he tends to rub people the wrong way sometimes. He had moved into a new neighborhood and got along fine with most of his neighbors, except for one guy. This one guy had kind of appointed himself the neighborhood HOA and goes around and tells people what they should do, like cleaning up their yards, repairs they need to do to their houses to make them look better, where they should park their cars and so forth. So this guy proceeds to start suggesting to my friend that he needs to take better care of his yard, do repairs to his house, and a few other things to, you know, make the neighborhood look better. My buddy was nice at first and thanked him for his suggestions. Over the course of a couple years, the guy got meaner and more insulting, saying that my friend's place was trashy, bad-mouthing him to other neighbors and being an annoying pain in the peach. Walter had gotten tired of, of the guy and pretty much told him to get fed. It was his private property and he could do what he wanted. They had went back and forth in verbal arguments over a few years. At this point, I should mention that the neighbor was a rich business owner. I think his argument was that Walter's place was bringing the surrounding property values down. I thought my friend's place just looked average, but nothing that would affect other people's places. And you could barely see it from the road. The neighbor from hell wanted everybody's yards immaculately manicured and fresh paint on all the houses. So the neighbor hires a contractor one day to do some work on his place. After the job is done, he's talking to the contractor, telling him how much he hates Walter and wants to teach him a lesson. He then asks the contractor if he knows anybody that would go have a little talk with my friend. The contractor let him go through his whole spiel and tell all the details, then lets the neighbor know that him and Walter are cousins, as in grew up together and pretty much brothers that would pass away for each other. He tells the neighbor that if he hears anything else about that, or if anything happens to Walter, the neighbor would be in a world of hurt. Walter hasn't heard a peep out of the neighbor since. Story 31. Neighbor's house looks condemned. The property is overgrown and impossible to walk through any portion of the yard. People who drive by can't believe anybody actually lives there. He also puts out cat food for all the wild animals, including a family of skunks that lives in his shed. The man that lived in my house before me tried to fix the horribly dilapidated fence that sits between the two properties, and the neighbor called the cops. I actually had to have the town step in and force him to replace it, as it became a safety hazard. Also, while I was away for work one week, my wife at the time was shoveling snow and threw some over the fence. He called the cops on her. Actual quote from the police officer, Oh yeah, that's Bob. I don't think his elevator goes all the way up to the top floor. Story 32. Our suing us for not giving her a building and carousel we didn't own was the least strange one. She also sued us for practicing slavery, being shapeshifters, changing the TV channels with our minds, trying to poison her, plums being meat, 
plums not being meat, her being allergic to meat, then later everything but meat, interfering with her mission from God, and then she tried to take us to the Hague for war crimes when we repaired our fence. That is a not at all complete list. She also threatened to kidnap me as a child and made a crazy stop motion video she tried to show to the city council starring my father and I. That is what makes a neighbor crazy. We had four bankers boxes full of papers after the three year ordeal. I will never again in my life fudge with crazy. Story 33. Constantly yells at children to stop doing whatever they are doing anywhere within eyesight of his house. I mean yelling. He also likes to open carry his pistol while he actively walks of his property and up to children of any age and just starts playing into them. Full on screaming and sweating at eight year olds while he rests his hand on his gun. He is a serial 911 abuser. Suspected, arrested, but not convicted child molester. Most of his property is just slightly out of city code too. After the most recent incident of him waving a loaded weapon at six yo that lives next door to him, because her dad had the audacity to move his own landscaping plants and horrible a-hole didn't like it, we have started a neighborhood campaign to just start filling city ordinance grievances against him. He's a dangerous bully, and unfortunately he knows how to constantly stay just enough within his legal rights to avoid serious consequences. So far, we're now all waiting to see what happens when the city makes him pull out his new fence because he has the ugly side out. That's a no-no in the suburban kingdoms. Plus, I doubt he pulled a permit. The hope is to get him to move out or go to jail. With his current escalations, jail is looking likely, but everyone is afraid it will be because he accidentally shot a 4-yo. Story 34. Cut all the internet cables to our whole stairwell because there's sin in the cables. If this gets attention, I've got stories about this guy. Edit. We had run-ins with this guy occasionally. Usually, he was accusing us of throwing joints into his wife's headscarf from the balcony, which of course was hilarious and not true. He was clearly some kind of Islamic fundamentalist. Not sure what sect or what his ethnic background was. He cut the internet to the house on two occasions. This first time it happened, we called the Vodafone technician to come fix it. I made sure I was home to let him in. The guy asked me where the apartment was with the cut wires, and I escorted him to the door on the first floor. I waited outside, and within a minute, the technician was coming back out. And our man of the house was standing there in the doorway, giving me a death stare. He closed the door. I asked the technician what happened. He looked like he had seen a ghost. He just said, I'll explain everything to your roommate, the leaseholder. Apparently, the man went on some rant to the technician and refused to let him fix the wires. He had cut them on purpose. He also threatened to terminate any man who came into his house while he wasn't there, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, we decided to just go back when he wasn't there and I had to escort this terrified technician into the apartment a second time where his wife let us in. The technician said, please don't leave me alone. I don't want a knife in the back. So I just stood in the open doorway. After having no internet for a week, it was finally fixed. He never ended up confronting us about going into his apartment when he wasn't there. This lasted about a year until he decided to do the same thing again. This time I was even more furious. I said we need to involve the housemeister and the police and I said I'm not going into that apartment again. My third roommate this time decided to just go talk with the guy. I didn't know about this and would have 100% been against it. My roommate said the guy went on the same rants as before about sin being in the cables and their censored photos and filth. My roommate explained, we need the internet for work and school. He said this apparently changed the man's mind, and he allowed my roommate, who is quite handy, to fix the cable again. My roommate then asked me to escort him into the apartment because he was also worried about getting murdered. I was of course very angry about the whole idea. I wanted to just have the police and management handle this. Now I'm supposed to sit around this crazy guy's apartment while my roommate fudge with his walls, and for what? So I can intimidate this man in his own home, because otherwise he might stab my roommate? Like, what the fudge are we doing? But it was already settled, and I had to sit on the floor. There was no furniture in this man's apartment while my roommate worked for an hour or more and listened to this man rant about religion, women, how Jews control the world, blah, blah, blah. I barely said a word. The craziest cow was that this man recommended YouTube conspiracy channels to us, which he watches on his phone. The whole reason we were there is this man thinks the internet is evil. Eventually, we finished, and he asked us to sit, and he talked at us even longer. It was so bizarre. I was super on edge. Eventually, he let us go and gave us some chocolate as a parting gift. Luckily, I never had to talk to him again. Story 35. Holy cow, what doesn't she do? Her husband got arrested for gun running a few years before we moved in. This is in the UK, so guns are a big no-no. So an otherwise quiet, mostly retiree village got a full show when the house was raided in the middle of the night. She still lives there, and we're pretty sure she's got a candy operation going or something similar. There's constantly sketchy-looking lads going in and out at all hours of the day and night. She occasionally gets into violent screaming matches with them at 3 in the morning. 
One day, we woke up to find a couple full-on dining chairs chucked up onto her roof. The house is in disrepair and the windows are covered from the inside with windoline, white window cream stuff. No idea why she doesn't buy some flipping curtains, but what do I know? The door has a big dent where it looks like someone tried to kick it in. More often than not, there's at least one stolen shopping trolley parked in her drive. She had a skip, large dumpster thing that contractors use when they do work in your house and have a lot of rubbish to get rid of, parked there for a while too, until the skip company it belonged to realized it was there and repossessed it. She got into a fight with them about that. She also got into a fight with a contractor who was doing work on our house because apparently the skip parked on our property was in her way. She's always yelling at someone about something. Friends, weird fellows that constantly come in and out, family, her dog. She has this tiny, untrained, yappy thing that regularly gets out, causing her to run up and down the street in the middle of the night screaming its name. She's had a go at pretty much every one of the surrounding neighbors at least once, except for our elderly next-door neighbor who seems to have a soft spot for her. She once came and hammered on the door at 10 o'clock at night when I was home alone. Not sure what for as I oh no well wasn't about to answer it. She's quite something, I have to say. Story 36. After my grandparents passed away, my siblings and I and my fiancé lived in their house and helped clean it out to fix up and sell. There was a lifelong neighbor who apparently lost it. He would honk a loud clown-like horn outside our living room window every time he left or came home. He did this because he claimed we were so loud that he could hear us, sitting there watching TV, in his basement where he lived. Aging mother lived upstairs, but he didn't hear the gunshot when my grandpa committed? He never used the city garbage service and would keep mountains of garbage in his backyard. He often left a TV blaring, right by our bedroom window, out on his back patio, while he wasn't even out there. When my grandparents lived in the house, they were good friends with his parents, and there was a good neighbor gate between the yards. When he started acting crazy, we put a lock on it, and he tried to burn it off. We changed the locks, because my mom knew they had a spare key to the house. And there were several times when we came home, and all of the lights were on and the heat was cranked up to 80. When my mother, who had known him his whole life, went over to try to figure out what the hell was going on. He tried to tell her that we, myself, two of my siblings, and my fiancé, were selling sweets, and that people were banging on our door at all hours whether we were home or not. We all worked full-time, and the dude was just straight-up crazy. We worried he might actually have his mother in the freezer, since no one had seen her in quite a while.